And we're going to kick it right off with Rob Olson. Howdy. Uh, so if you're here for Duckies in the Middle, um, sorry. I wanted to see that one too. That was on my list. Uh, so instead, we're going to talk about cybersecurity education standards, which are still kind of a cluster, right? I mean, yeah. So a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm currently a lecturer at RIT. I wear a bunch of different hats there. I teach, I don't know, two to three classes a semester, depending on what else I've got going on. Um, I've been active at, in curriculum development for quite a few years, both at RIT and in previous lives, previous institutions. And at the moment, I'm incoming as the head of our undergraduate curriculum committee and as our undergraduate program coordinator, which puts me kind of in, in an interesting position to see what's going on with a lot of the cybersecurity education standards. And there's a lot out there. Um, so before we start comparing them, we need to do a little bit of sort of how the sausage gets made type. Um, it's, it's, it's messy. Like, I think the sausage process is cleaner. Uh, so what we see um, is a number of different agencies, a number of different groups involved in, these, in the creation of these standards. ABET, uh, and I'm blanking on what ABET stands for, but ABET is the main accrediting agency for, computing uh, for the computing discipline. Um, they have traditionally uh, accredited computer science programs, information technology programs, information systems, and now they're starting to kind of uh, dabble in cybersecurity standards. They've been going through um, a pretty lengthy process. They've been working on this for about two years, I think, trying to build out their own cybersecurity, uh, cybersecurity accreditation, which I think is largely intended to compete with NSA, the NSA uh, CAE, uh, that's the Center for Academic Ex Excellence in Cybersecurity, uh, the CAE programs. Uh, and an NSA has two, uh, CAECD, which is cyber defense, uh, and that comes in both a two-year and a four-year variant. We'll be talking about the four-year one mostly here. And there's also cyber operations, which comes in, I think, fundamental and advanced variants. And we'll, when I talk about that, we'll, I'll be uh, talking about the, um, the fundamental one, not the advanced one. Now, accreditations uh, are kind of a buzzword in higher ed. And it's important to understand what that means. So accreditation refers to an external reviewer coming in and looking at your program and saying, that's, you know, this, this meets some objective standards that somebody, that somebody besides the institution has put out there. Um, so it's basically a certification, if you will, an independent certification that your program meets some kind of standards. But there are two kinds of accreditation in higher ed. There's accreditation at the institutional level and accreditation at the program level. Accreditation at the program level or at the institutional level, you see thing, organizations such as middle states, which are huge and basically um, prove, uh, are used to verify that a college is on the up and up. Okay? If, you're, if your institution as a whole doesn't have an accreditation, you should probably be concerned. If your program is not accredited, that's a, an entirely different thing. There are many, uh, many institutions that, have, uh, that are themselves accredited that, do, that have unaccredited programs that, uh, there. And we'll talk about some numbers for this in a second. But just because a particular program accredited is not accredited does not mean that it is not a high quality program. Okay? All it means is that uh, it does not necessarily adhere to a particular standard. Uh, NSA uh, has this thing, they don't call themselves an accreditor, they call themselves designators. They call their things designations. I don't know that there's any practical difference. Okay, except it's not the keyword that the buzzword that academia uses. So, how does this come about? Um, we start off with ACM curricular recommendations, and nobody has to adhere to these. In some cases, that's I actually think a, not a bad thing. If you look at, for example, the ACM computer science uh, curriculum, at least the 2013 version, I think there's a new draft, but I don't know that it's been finalized. Um, the ACM computer science curriculum only has three to nine instructional hours allocated for security. That's three to nine lectures, one hour lectures, to learn everything a computer science graduate needs to learn about security. Um, 
if an organization strictly adhered to that, I think they'd be underserving of students here. So those recommendations kind of get, those recommendations get taken into consideration. They are, there's a little bit of influence by industry, um, and those get turned into ABET requirements. Now, both of these things and industry input goes into actually creating a program or modifying a program to meet, uh, to meet or adhere to these standards. Largely speaking, it's ABET that is the prime mover here, the main mover. Uh, industry tends not to have a huge voice in this space, which is good sometimes and sometimes not. Because in industry tends to be very buzzwordy. Like I've, I've heard, for example, of um, uh, industrial advisory boards asking places to create entire courses on blockchain. That seems like maybe overkill to me. Um, but they do have a little bit of, um, they do have a little bit of influence, probably not as much as they necessarily should, okay? Because academia tends to go the other direction and think entirely in terms of theory. Now, once this program gets made, the name of the game is assessment, okay? And this is, this is how things happen in academia. So ideally, you're supposed to have some kind of academic content and you develop and um, revise continually these things called learning outcomes. You develop them, them, you develop these yourself for the most part. They oftentimes have to adhere to or uh, closely relate to um, learning outcomes in these standards. But these are your goals that you set for yourself and you have to periodically measure them through uh, by developing assessment metrics. You have to collect and report data for these uh, and uh, analyze and so on. Uh, you often hear accreditors talk about this idea of closing the loop, and that's quite often because a lot of academic institutions stop at collecting and reporting and never go through the whole revision process. Okay? So I think this is a, a pretty important thing because this is how change gets made in academic content or should get made in academic content. One of the things I think we should do is take a look at how these standards talk about learning outcomes. Uh, so I'm going to have some metrics for comparing these programs. First is adoption rates. Uh, this is a little bit of a soft metric because there's a number of confounding variables here. It doesn't take into consideration um, information such as the prevalence of particular degree programs. For example, there are many, many computer science programs, very few computer security programs. So naturally, we would expect to see more accredited computer science programs. Um, and it doesn't take into account necessarily the difficulty of acquiring a particular designation or accreditation. Uh, some, of this, some of these accre uh, accreditation and pr uh, designation processes are multi-year endeavors, okay? It takes a lot of time. Um, I think another thing to look at is required technical content. And this is where you see um, me sort of borrowing some ideas for how industry talks about certifications, right? So if you look at industry certifications, there are some that, get, that have really a good rap, like OSCP. Right? So I did OSCP, it kicked my ass, and you know, that's how it works. And it was highly, highly technical. You hear, on the other hand, things like CISP and CEH, et cetera, being knocked around a little bit because they are largely non-technical and people think they ought to be. I'm not gonna delve into whether or not that's the case, but it is a point of data that I think we should use to compare academic programs in, uh, in relation to security. Are they highly technical security programs or are they more aimed at security analysts, at, at producing security analysts. So we'll take a look at uh, required technical and non-technical content, and also the kinds of skills that are measured in learning outcomes. So again, these learning outcomes are, are sort of the lifeblood. What do these standards think, what kind of skills in the security realm do these standards think students ought to come away with? Are they gonna be soft skills such as, um, you know, analyze, discuss, develop, or are they gonna be harder skills like build, implement, create, okay? So let's start off with adoption, with adoption rates. Uh, the ABET computer science curriculum is by far the most widely adopted at 335 um, accredited uh, programs. I think, world, I think this is worldwide. Uh, honestly, ABET is awesome with their data, so kudos to them. Like, you can download, there's like a one-click download for a spreadsheet with all of their accreditation data for every school. Um, it's easily sorted, it's fantastic. Uh, by comparison, there were only uh, 50, what, uh, 59 and 55 information technology and information, information systems programs um, 
and there's zero security, which isn't surprising. The security standards were all, uh, the security um, accreditation standard that ABET put out, well, I should say ABET slash ACM, the relationship isn't clear there, uh, that they put out, it was a few months ago that they, finally, that they actually finalized it. So it's not terribly surprising that um, no one has it yet because this is probably going to be at least a year-long process for the, first, uh, for the first institution to get the first accreditation. Uh, NSA's CAECD has, um, has about uh, 154 programs. Now, one of the interesting things about this is how NS uh, the CAECD has changed over time. It used to be that as long as you offered these courses, uh, you know, a particular set of courses that I'll, I'll show in a second, at any institution, or at, at the institutional level, you got accredited. They have since really tightened that up, and now it has to be uh, within a particular degree or a particular track or a particular program that the set of courses are uh, required. So I, I suspect this number is, going, is on the decline because uh, institutions are finding it harder to um, tighten up their curriculum to meet, that, to meet that particular requirement. And for the NSA CACO, uh, we see 20 schools. And when you look at some of, these, some of the learning outcomes uh, for NSA CEACO, it's not terribly surprising uh, why that's the case. Uh, honestly, some of those learning outcomes are crazy. So as far as uh, required content, um, as far as looking at content metrics, I'm going to talk about is the content required, or is it optional, or is it neither? Okay, Is it uh, basically, do students have to see this material? Uh, and how much time is dedicated to this material in the curriculum? And feel free to disagree with me on this one, because this is entirely a subjective categorization on my part. I kind of ballparked it at about um, 35, uh, what is it, 35 percent, uh, in roughly the 35 percent marks. Um, but there's, there's no way to measure this. This is just me looking at these standards and, and creating a subjective judgment here. Okay. And finally, is this topic related to a learning outcome? Since again, learning outcomes are the thing that drives academia. So let's start off by looking at curriculum. And here we have the ABET CS curriculum, which I'm sure is too small for everyone to read. Um, but just to give you a very high level view, there is uh, coverage of algorithms, CS theory, programming languages, uh, a deep dive into one programming language, exposure, exposure to architecture, organization, networking, OS, uh, parallel and uh, distributed computing, a required uh, computer-based systems um, project that uh, looks at multiple layers of abstraction, and that's it. There is no mention of security at all in the ABET, in the ABET CS requirements. There is a ABET-wide, gener very general security uh, learning outcome that says something along the lines of the program must cover security in an appropriate way. Yeah, so I hear laughs. I, I'm right there with you. Okay. Yeah, what does appropriate way mean, right? That's up, that's up to the institution to define. Uh, as a side note, just an interesting anecdote. I got into security because I was teaching in a program that got dinged for not offering either security or ethics. Uh, so we created a class called Security and Ethics. And I, I was doing AI before this, and I wanted to teach the ethics part. And security be, ended up being a lot more fun than AI. Um, OK, so the IT curriculum. Again, uh, there is very little in the way of security here. OK, so we see coverages of interesting topics related to uh, web, information management, um, systems like technologies, networking, et cetera, um, system integration, which is nice. We do see system administration here, which is an interesting thing. Um, but we don't, see any, we don't see security specifically called out in any way. And just, you know, heads up, the information systems curriculum is no different. Okay? None of these, none of these three curriculums call out security uh, as they relate to the particular discipline. They all rely on that one general learning outcome uh, that says cover security in some appropriate way. Okay? So I think ABET realized that they had a problem to their credit. Uh, ABET and ACM realized they have a security problem to their credit in their standards. And they've looked at this by coming up with a 
CSEC curriculum that's entirely separate, which I think, going back to that uh, diagram where I said industry has a little bit of influence on everything but not a lot, I think this is probably a place where industry might, where um, academia might have benefited for, from higher industry input because it seems the industry trend is to add more security into particular parts, basically integrate security more into other things rather than pulling it out and siloing it. This seems a strategic error on ABET's part. Uh, but if we look at this breakdown, the, uh, it really feels a lot like CISP. It feels like um, academia sat down and looked at everything, all the topics, did a two-year study, and came up with CISP. Um, a four-year long CISP, which honestly may not be bad, right? I mean, if, if everybody knew in depth everything in the CISP CVK, I think we'd be a lot better off, okay? Particularly if, there, if it had um, hands-on lab components too. But for better or worse, this is where we are. Even if you do deep dives into these topics, you'll see it, it, it feels very, very cisp at every layer of abstraction uh, in, in the um, CSEC curriculum here. So NSA, CAECD, by, by comparison, kind of divides this into two, top, into two parts, and we see a lot more hard skills, okay? Databases, network defense, programming, intro to crypto, um, basic scripting. So these are required classes. It seems like a much more technical, okay, seems like a much more technical um, implementation. So, I'm gonna fast forward here. Just, uh, it has a ton of electives to make it uh, very, um, very wide, okay? So that a lot of people can get it. Uh, CACD, uh, CACO has a number of uh, very, very technical um, subject areas, including low-level programming. One of their learning outcomes is implementing Telnet-like uh, telnet application in assembly with no external libraries. And that's what they expect a four-year student, a four-year undergraduate to be, be able to do by the time they're done. Uh, to me, that smells of wanting people to be able to make implants. Uh, there's some electives here as well. So I'll, I'll leave this up just for the slide deck and move through this pretty quickly. Uh, so for technical content, um, programming, is it required? Uh, and the answer is the only uh, programs that require, about half of these require it. So CS, ABET CS requires it, CD requires it, CO requires it. Uh, only at CO and CS is it significant, and only for uh, CACO and CACD are there learning outcomes. So networking is a little bit better, but again, we see uh, learning outcomes pretty much in the, in the CAE uh, checkboxes. Um, system administration. It is, a it is a required topic, oh, I, it looks like I have an error. It, it is a um, required topic in ABET IT, that, that no should be a yes, but there's no learning outcome connected to it. Uh, it is a requirement in NSA, CE, CD, um, not in the CSEC curriculum, or it is in the CSEC curriculum, but it's only mentioned. Uh, crypto, similarly, we see the yeses at the bottom. We see very few learning outcomes. So for non-technical content, uh, risk, ABET, uh, with the exception of the CSEC, doesn't cover risk. Um, NSA does. Security policy, again, we only see this required at the bottom levels, okay? Uh, security management, we see this covered in CSEC 2017 and CACD. Privacy, um, it's hit in CSEC uh, 2017, CACD not in CEACO, which I think is an interesting thing. Ethics, uh, again, we, we actually see a lot of yes, a lot of things here, a lot of yeses for ethics with some caveats. For example, CACO, which again is the NSA's offensive um, designation, requires significantly more content from the Geneva Conventions than it does ethics. Okay, uh, learning outcomes, we see uh, the soft skills, uh, ABET kind of falls along the soft skill line, uh, NS and um, the NSA, CACD falls along the hard skill part of the spectrum, okay? Uh, which I think, and I'm on my last slide, okay? Um, 
so some, some conclusions here. I think CSEC 2017 does a better job at hitting, at hitting uh, core security content, even though it focuses mostly on soft skills. I think CSEC 17, 2017 is an indicator that ABET wants to do more security and that it wants security to be its own discipline. But I think it, the accreditation is actually structured so that anybody could get it, which is counterintuitive to, I think, their goal, or counterproductive to their goal. Um, CS, ABET CS is the most prevalent, but it has the fewest core security skills. Uh, NSA CACO pushes technical skills, I think, at the, at the expense of soft skills. And uh, CACD is, um, has a lot of content. Uh, very, it hits uh, a lot of security information, but it's very, very broad, okay? Uh, so I've got some references here. I'll, again, I'll just leave these up for the video very quickly. And um, that's it. <laughs>